upcoming training about consent lab um, facilitation. So this is my second round. And um, a few of the people who were in that consent lab have done this round last year of a consent lab facilitator. And um, some of them have done as well some other facilitation workshops with me where they facilitate the uh, foundation of the medical consent. So the invitation is with this upcoming certification about facilitation that I would like to invite into this frame of holding space and facilitating to hold space for others, for them to have the experience that they want to have. And that there is as well an invitation to um, getting certified in holding a consent lab and holding that space exactly the way how I have done that. I mean, not exactly the way everybody is doing that in their own individual way, but in the frame of that, this kind of two questions in the background are, are building the um, dynamic and guiding people into the art of making choices, the magic of making choices about what they want to experience. So are there any questions that I can answer? Hi, um, I want to go jump straight to the end piece, um, if I may, because I, I know that you would have lots to share with us about content, but how do you find yourself able to certify people to practice? I, I just think that's a really interesting question at the moment, partly because we were all working online and and because it matters to me that there's a rigorous process for certification, mm -hmm. yet it's also quite, it's quite a sensitive, it's interesting. And I just wondered what your thoughts were on that. I call myself a geek and an expert of that stuff there, yeah, behind me. And I have learned to listen and to observe. So my assessments are pretty sharp about where people are and what their yeah. shadows are. And I see shadows as opportunities to evolve and dig deeper into our unconscious way. So that through the training that, um, of course, I observe people. And it does not mean that there's a certification at the end of a course. So the invitation is to gain all the knowledge and I provide all the material. And then I support people in their community to start holding spaces like that, maybe with three, four people or so, just like to get really the experience of space holding. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I ask people when they have officially had uh, five consent labs, for example, in this case, that in their self-responsibility, they um, arrange a call with me. And on that call, I will have a serious conversation about where are your shortcomings and where are your difficulties in holding space. And if people say, oh, I'm good, I have no shortcomings, I have no difficulties, then just like, okay, you're definitely not ready. Yeah. So the vulnerability of um, fucking it up and, and the vulnerability of being imperfect is, is, is one of the key components I'm looking for. Does it answer that question? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it really does. Okay. Yeah. And, and if there aren't any other questions, that maybe you'd say something a bit more about shadow in the teaching at some point. Oh, yeah, I can do that. I mean, the main shadows are, you know, when you look in these two questions there, so the may I will you question, they're literally covering the entire human communication of making a request. The main question is, why don't we ask for what we want? And what are we doing instead? And why don't we say no? And what are we doing instead? And then we're getting the answers of this four question. We get a, a, a variety, a broad band of survival mechanisms and behavior. And you find them in the somatic consent engagement system. And the way how most people engage with that shadow in the unconscious way, they try to hide them and put them away. And part of my work in education, not in this one, but when it goes into other levels, is that the polyvagal theory and the function of the autonomic nervous system and behavior around um, um, strategies uh, to bring into the open and not to make them wrong, to acknowledge our behavior as adaptive survival mechanisms that we needed to create to get our needs met. 
and that there is the joy that we can learn in getting more parts of ourselves back. And that's a lifelong process. But the main thing I'm aware of is where most people having the difficulties is in this behavior around their own action or their own impulses of action towards a felt sense of pleasure, what comes from the may I question, making a request. So that the, and we, we practice that a lot with feeling the object and then the invitation going around and feeling other people um, within a request and respecting their limits. And this is the main indicator where I can observe and see and feel people where the difficulties are to evolve. And that's my invitation to dig down that road. Because if people are not willing to do that, they're definitely not willing um, to... I'm not willing to certify them. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I just finished the last certification and we were eight people in this um, certification. And um, my intention is to support people who are going through that to set up their own work as much as I can and as much as, as I can support them. So I want to make sure that this is a personal, individual process. Can you tell us about the content of this course? Well, the main thing is I've kind of broken down the structure of the um, consent lab. So I just um, do a kind of an um, uh, analyzing of the different way of building it up for the consent lab certification so that there are videos about learning it yourself, the way how the structure works of the consent lab. But in the main thing, it is about the facilitation way of um, as a facilitator to show up um, for a language of inclusivity and for a language of um, welcoming people making choices in any direction. So, and um, part of the course is that everyone uh, has the opportunity to, if they don't want to do the consent lab facilitation, if they just want to use it for facilitating, that they can as well create a five minute um, um, facilitation for the group we are in so that you guide as a facilitator the group in an exercise of a workshop how you would like to do it. So you will have five minutes. It depends on the amount of people we have in the group, how long this time will be, maybe seven minutes, maybe eight, I don't know. So that everyone has the opportunity to present themselves in their insecurity, in their fucked upness, and in the fear of making mistakes and not being perfect. So it's not necessarily for only for people who want to do the consent lab. No. It, it could be whatever idea that they have. Mm -hmm. that it's, 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 it's like fine tuning your f facilitation skills. And that can be facilitation in anything. That can be facilitation in one-on-one -on -one sessions. That can be facilitation in, um, in smaller groups. Uh, that can be facilitating as a space holder of, I don't know, yoga or anything. It's just like, what is the key component of facilitation? And then how to translate that into the consent lab and how to um, use this dynamic of letting people find how they want to receive and the experience they want to have. What was the most magical thing you found out for yourself while creating this um, facilitation seminar? Hmm. What I have ob observed um, over the years is that there is a magic moment where people can rise up into this weep space. And in this we space, there is a magic happening that nowhere else happens. And, you know, when I was in my early uh, facilitation dynamics, and I've, I, I have, before I have learned facilitating or facilitation, I have not learned facilitation. You know, like most of us, we come from school, we see what other teachers do, and we just like monkey see, monkey do, and then we're just becoming kind of an... Um, disciple of one, I don't know, system or of one, I don't know, idea. 
and then we follow the teacher and then we just try to copy teacher and then we just teach people what they we teach other people what our teacher taught us so it's like a hierarchical structure where i say you would needs to happen on so there is no choice making invitation in most people's teaching and i just radically rip that out of my system on the roots and just throw that away and so my my main um aha all of that is this awakening in so seeing the light bulbs people feeling safe in their body making choices and having the experience that they want to have and this is this is the the, the core diamond that i want to deliver so my own facilitation space holding has radically shifted um, about well, I started it four years ago. I just did the foundation of facilitation um, course. So I've um, um, participated in that twice. So I'm a cuddle party facilitator. Um, so it's, it was pretty an education and I was supposed to um, do the next uh, foundation of facilitation workshop with people. And then this uh, situation with the School of Consent and Betty Martin kind of broke apart. And then I choose um, doing it my own way. And the Consent Lab is something that I really um, love to share with the world. And, you know, cuddle party is cuddle party. And I love cuddle parties. Uh, but I'd rather do Consent Labs than cuddle parties. Sometimes I do cuddle parties, but... It strikes me as you speak, Matt, that there's real space for this with young people. I don't know if anybody here works with the young people, but I work with teenagers a bit in my coaching. And I'd love to work younger and younger and, you know, just find the financial business model for getting some work into sectors where people are just underserved. You know, so the coaching is no longer only for rich white people mm. who are over 30 or whatever it might be. But just hearing you speak, it just took me to that idea of, gosh, how powerful would that be to sit down with a child of any age in a, in a little consent lab and just invite them to experience what you're describing and you know, what we experienced this morning. Yeah. 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 I love that idea. And um, I had a lot of conversations with that um, as well with Bus, who is a school teacher. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And, um, you that know, yeah. so, so the thing is, I'm not a pedagogue. And yeah. as, as a non pedagogue, I have to be really careful which age group I'm showing up for. And specifically, my own privilege as a white male, I have to um, acknowledge that I have the privilege that I have the privilege of a white male. And um, as a not pedagogue, I have to be really careful for what age group I'm showing up. So specifically for teenager or younger people under 18, um, I would not do that. And I would just give that to people who have the education around pedagogy. Exactly. I'm yeah. just thinking about the ripples of what you're saying. Yeah. If, if other people train with you in this kind of facilitation training, it just has the capacity to go a very long way. Yeah. Yeah, I've, 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 I've big ideas. And, um, and I desire and envision people uh, to work with people who just like um, want to pull in the same direction. And, um, and I'm yeah. definitely not in any kind of hierarchical teaching. Uh, is it very much uh, directed towards the online work or is it uh, the consent lab in a universal form? Because I, I feel I lack the embodiment of some of this that I, I really, the theoretical part, I really understand, but you know, I'm really insecure about the, what would come up also for the participants in a real life workshop. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, I love live workshops and this yeah. what we're doing here online is literally. Yeah, so the main thing is that um, I can't wait that we go back in live workshops. But nobody really knows how long that will be. And um, so this is kind of an alternative uh, compromise that I see at the moment. And, um, you know, this is all semi-professional what I'm doing. You know, I have my little studio here and I can only do a certain amount of things. 
So that means that there's a certain level of responsibility that I'd like to give to everybody who is participating. And that's as well in between, in the between time to, uh, so I give some assignments and these assignments are literally playing the three minute game with other people that you coming from an embodied place of that. And, um, you know, as a facilitator or as a space holder, uh, there's always something to learn. And it doesn't matter how much experience I have. It feels more like I'm going backwards. The more I learn, the more vulnerable and um, um, insecure I literally get when I hold spaces. But it doesn't matter where you are. You have an expertise of your own experience of space holding and you will guide people from that expertise as far as you have gotten yourself. And I imagine that this is part of the self-responsibility to um, dig deeper and in yourself that you can guide people deeper and you will come on your edges and everyone is coming on their edges and I think that's part of learning to facilitate and being a facilitator being vulnerable and fucking it up all right so um, you know where the links are you know what the price is um, you know what the time frame is um, and uh, my invitation is for everyone to be the best version of themselves to hold space for people to have the experience that they want to have. And that does not mean that anyone has to become a consent lab facilitator. It's just an optional invitation. And, um, and there are other courses and hopefully soon live, live workshops as well where everybody can just like... Um, um, gain the skills that they need to have to be a space holder of the community you want to facilitate your, your gifts thank you very much